Welcome to an episode of PLTW's CEA class with Mr. Seward, your favorite project lead the way teacher. Today we're looking at 3.2.2 which is about loads and tasks and these are some of the different types of loads. Today we're going to be talking about one particular type of load which is going to be snow loads. Now Step number one in uh, structural design is planning, and that's how is the building going to be supported? Uh, what's its intended purpose? They're going to design for uh, cost, for materials, types, and weights, and construction time. Those things are all considered in the planning stage. Then the second stage of designing a building is to start designing it within uh, guidelines uh, from building codes for loads and we're going to use some building codes to establish some uh, design uh, parameters. So here are the different kinds of loads. Uh, design loads probably won't occur during the lifetime of a structure but it is very conservative. Uh, there's live loads, there's dead loads, there's snow and ice loads. We're going to look at snow loads today. There are rain loads, uh, flood loads, wind loads, and you can see the list uh, on the screen in front of you right now. So design loads are really fixed loads. Uh, they are the weight of the building components and the weight of fixed service equipment. So examples of dead loads include the weight of a roof, uh, walls, floors, and framing. Plumbing, electrical, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and fire sprinkler systems. So the upper picture here shows heating, ventilation, and air conditioning ductwork, as well as the roof system and framing. Those are all dead loads. The second picture down shows fire suppression equipment in a building. So design loads, those are live loads, those are transient and moving loads. They are produced by the use and occupancy of a building. Live loads vary during the structure's lifetime and they are specified in building codes. Some examples of live loads include people, furniture, merchandise, vehicles, construction, loads, such as that. And here's the one we're going to be starting with today uh, in terms of calculating loads, we're going to be looking at snow loads. And that is the force of accumulated snow on a roof. And it's specified in our building codes or by your local building department. And it really depends on the location of the building. If you're building in upstate New York, design snow loads are one thing. If you're building in Hawaii, they are nothing. So, uh, it also depends on wind exposure, uh, how important the building is, and the slope of the roof. So the weight of snow can be estimated based on typical snowfalls in an area. Uh, the magnitude of the design snow load really depends on where the building is located and the amount of snow in that area, the exposure of the building to wind, the importance of the building, and the slope of the roof. And I just said all that in the prior paragraph, but whatever. So here is the design snow load calculation. And uh, it's really kind of nice because this slide also shows us the, uh, the names of all of these little uh, fa factors here. So the first one is PS, and that is the design snow load. Then you're going to have, that is equal to 0.7, and that's a constant, times CS, which is the roof slope factor, times CE, which is the exposure factor, times CT, which is the uh, thermal factor of the building, times IS, which is the importance factor of the building, and then PG, which is the ground snow load. So here we're going to Take a look at the last slide for this uh, PowerPoint for a few minutes. Um, but 
you we're going to find the ground snow load for Springfield, Colorado. That's the red dot right here in the middle of the map. And that snow load is 15 PSF because you can see the number 15 right here and it's within this this area that's encased by this moving line. Uh, you can see that the design snow load for this location, I'm not sure what it is, is 20 PSS. PSF stands for pounds per square foot. So if your PG, which is the ground snow load, that's the actual ground snow load, is less than or equal to 20 pounds per square foot, which this one is, we are less than 20 pounds per square foot right here, then your PS, which is your design snow load, is going to be equal to or greater than IS, which is the importance factor of the building, times PG, which is the ground snow load. So whatever the importance factor is of the building, and you'll see in a chart where we get that uh, importance factor uh, from IS times PG times the 20 or 15 in this case, you would get uh, your design snow load. Uh, if the PG is greater than 20 pounds per square foot, so let's see, I don't see any of those on this map, but let's just use this one. Uh, if it's greater than 20 pounds per square foot, then your PS, which is your design snow load, is going to be greater than or equal to the importance factor of the building times 20 PSF, or this number would change. Like where we live right now in uh, the Buffalo, Lockport, New York area, this PSF pounds per square foot is more in the range of, uh, if I remember correctly, I'm going to say 50 pounds per square foot. Okay, so enough of that for now. Next up, doing some calculation stuff.